Hi there, it's Kevin with the Rogue Market here with a Ultimate Masters Box EV update for day zero. The dust is starting to settle on Ultimate Masters as the average Joes are putting up the cards they crack on TCG Player and eBay. And we are starting to see the market adjust to those listings. So for those of you who haven't been following the series, I have a EV spreadsheet that I stole from Saffron Olive, uh, Seth from over at MT Goldfish. Uh, he just wasn't updating them accurately, so I thought I'd take the helm and, at, and update these myself. And this is actually close to where I predicted the prices would be. And in fact, it's like spot on. I was off on a few of the cards. However, I think I had it around 220 and with the foil EV being around 260 uh, without the box topper. So anyway, uh, we'll go down the, the list and, and kind of compare the cards at the moment. But just want to address a few things. First of all, we'll be back with the Rogue Roundup and similar type videos for the Rogue Market. Typically with this channel, I want to be more edited. However, it's been a weird time in the MG market. I don't think that this has been the time to really even invest at all in uh, card singles. And it's due to the fact that if you print a set like this with just so much value, it is going to gobble up all of the money that would be used to purchase singles. We saw a really good singles market last Christmas. This Christmas, it's been abysmal. And I think it's because of all of the Magic the Gathering money has gone towards Ultimate Masters because it was such a steal of a deal at the time. But this just goes to show that you can throw any amount of cards in a set and it's inevitably going to go down to the cost of goods if the supply is high enough. Now the supply does look extremely high on this set. In fact, after talking to my distributor, it sounds like there is going to be another release of the set. So I'm not gonna call another wave or a, re a reprint, it's more of a restock. So how Wizards does is they give the initial wave of the the first printing of a set. I, I believe it's how they did with Iconic Masters, Ultimate Masters as well. And after that, then they release another wave of the original stock to the distributors for everyone to restock up. So my distributor thinks it's going to be about one-fifth of the size of the original wave. So we still haven't even seen the bottom of this set yet. We are also starting to anticipate the size of the, the Walmart and Target uh, of the, the, the draft packs or whatever you want to call it, the three packs of those. And they seem to have high quantities. Our Walmart already has them for sale. They broke street date. And in fact, they've been there since this morning. And uh, I'm sure that the rest of Walmarts also have put them up a, a couple days before. There have been tweets all over Twitter and whatnot about people being able to purchase them directly from Walmart. Uh, the official date will be tomorrow for the release. That's when local game stores will be able to start selling packs and the drafts will start happening. And so this is even like pre-drafting, pre-event prices. So this is this is pretty, pretty low already. And there's no reason to think that the, the box EV won't continue to dwindle. Uh, with that said, I still think this is a good set long-term. A lot of these cards are cards that are have a lot of demand they are they are huge archetypes in both either commander staples or modern or legacy and they did pick good cards but again i just want to reiterate it goes to show they can throw as many cards as they want in a set with high supply and inevitably it will go down to the distributor box between the distri di distributor box and like the low that it's going on uh the secondary market is how much the the product will be worth uh, how much the boxy view will be worth so let's take a look at some of these cards. Uh, we have the Lily on the Veil down to $51.99 at the market price. If you actually check uh, TC Player, it's a little bit inaccurate. It says the market price is $52.83. That was the cheapest price I saw earlier, but it looks like these have rebounded back up to the 61. So it means that someone's been purchasing these like crazy um, from the set. Uh, as they don't think that they're going to hold at the 50. Uh, I do think, though, I'm going to keep this for now. This might need to be adjusted, but this is going to be very s significant to even put this back up to 61. So if I edit it right here, it just goes up like a buck is all that $10 from one Mythic adds to the, the, the total box EV, or two bucks is what it looks like. Um, Karn Liberated is, is consistently selling for a little bit higher from Liliana. I found that interest, interesting. Uh, Caverns of Soul, Snapcaster Mage, and Tarmogoyf still seem to be above the $40 mark. So I'm not sounding that crazy now, am I, when I said that Tarmogoyf would be a $40 card? I got a lot of flack, a ton of flack, for some of these videos that I put out on this channel as well as my main channel over at Rogue Deck Builder, how I don't know what I'm talking about, how prices are going to hold high because these are such great cards and it, I can't compare it to Iconic Masters or, or Masters 25 because those were garbage sets but I just you know I want to reiterate that it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter the contents it really matters the cost of goods and, and supply if both of those are are relatively low like the cost of goods per 
uh, comparatively to the contents and the supply is quite high, the prices always have to go down and meet that. And I actually think that Masters 25 and Iconic Masters have a, t a, a bunch of targets that I would rather invest in than these particular cards. Like, for example, I don't think that Liliana the Veil is ever going to be the amount Jason the Mind Sculptor is again, uh, just because of how dismally opened Masters 25 was and how much of this set is going to be open. It's going to take a long time for those Masters 25 boxes to be cracked. And the same we say said for cards uh, like the Horizon Canopies uh, out of the, the older sets. I mean, I still think the you know, Noble Hierarch is one of the most played cards in modern and is all the way down to $33.99. Whereas rares in Iconic Masters and Masters 25 have been able to hold uh, a little bit of value or, or a much better value than that $33 mark. However, making the contrast with the Iconic Masters and the Masters 25 was spot on because we did see prices from Commander Stables or even Modern uh, get cut in half and even higher. So I was saying that this set being such a good set is actually going against the prices holding value, not for it, because more will be opened and that there will probably be susceptible to even be uh, a, a even higher percentage loss per card uh, from this set. So anyway, you can kind of scroll down these ones. I'll have the link in the description below uh, where you can find my Ultimate Masters Booster Box Live EV. Uh, some of these are stubbornly staying high, like the Caracas and the Bitter Blossom. I'm very surprised that these are still above the $25 mark. But you can see that the Eldrazi's, most of them are down 20. Cole's look is, is, start, is leapfrogged above Emrakul. I've kind of kept these in their slots what they originally were to show you that some cards have been hit harder uh, than there the the cards above them or below them as this was the original order i believe when the set was spoiled of what cards were worth what uh i think this is updated a couple times actually with the the, the listings because I, I don't remember when i ripped it from uh saffron olive the rares though give you a bigger picture of just how much this set has fallen look at back to basics the over 100 what over 80 dollar card that is now down to 20 and we have noble hark 2 that has just been obliterated in price value the story even gets uh much more telling when you go down here and we have our, our first real bulk cards so like the raya dawnbreakers magus desolate towering towering and string wildwoods can all be found between the 20 and 35 cent range and a bunch of these other ones are starting to go down uh below the dollar so we have a significant amount of cards that are uh below the dollar and i think when we first started this there's only towering and stirring wildwoods that were actually under a dollar and yeah, many, many under a dollar, many under two dollars. Cards like Eldrazi Conscription that were like a ten dollar card have lost eighty percent of their value. Even cards that I thought were going to hold a lot more value, like Vexing Devil, have been more than halved in price. And even Commander Staples like the Woodfall Primus are are having a tough time staying above that dollar price. Uh, Uncommons too is a, another very clear picture of just how much this set is being opened. Eternal Witness at 250. Kitchen Phoenix Lava Spike are at two, and the rest of the cards are below two, uh, with many cards that probably even need to be bumped off this list. I wasn't even bothering to check some of these prices, but the, the uncommon value isn't adding that much to the booster box value like it used to with a bunch of you know six and four and five dollar uncommons uncommons tend to actually add a significant portion of value to box sets if they have good uncommons just look at ixlon for example with field of ruins and unclaimed territories and charter courses that actually has a significant portion of the box ev of ixlon so anyway that just gives you kind of an overview of where we're at with ultimate masters like i said we haven't seen the whole dust settle yet this is day zero so technically this product isn't even for sale yet and we've seen the box value go way 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 down so again we'll keep you updated with this and i'll get back to my regular programming for the rogue market there are some interesting statistics that were released today that magic still seems to be what i like to call stagnantly strong so a game doesn't i mean if a game can kind of stay at a nice level that's not horrible for the game of course you want growth you want new players you want more new players entering the game than you do leaving the game that leads to a very very robust market but kind of a, a stagnant but healthy player base is also decent for a market and that seems to be with the numbers released when wizards talked about they're adding the 10 million dollar tournament through 2019 they're going to try to get about 10 million dollars with the prizes that arena is very strong uh mtgo is crashing but that's for a video for another day and all, all to all, the signs are pretty good for the health of the, the game. However, the singles market, this is what happens when you, you release it. If Wizards cannot continue to do this sort of thing, otherwise there won't be a secondary singles market. It will just be you know buying these sort of sealed products and then watching prices crash uh, 
like this every time they do this. So anyway, I mean, there's still a bunch of targets outside of the cards that were printed in Ultimate Masters, but that is getting few and far between. This one really went above and beyond uh, what they usually do with these particular things. Hope that this gives you like a nice little update for it. Like I said, I'll have the link in the description below for uh, the, the card prices. If you have you find a problem with this, just comment in the comment section. We'll get it corrected. They This is like, for example, the Liliana is crazy because when I started this video, I had to redo this. My audio is way off, but there was a lot of cards under, under this price. And now it seems to be the 61 is the price. I mean, I'm sure refreshing this might not do anything with this now not anything in it right now but again you're gonna get an even clearer picture tomorrow when you're you're i said the average day average day joes your wannabe box sellers the people that, that don't really understand that cracking booster boxes to try to get value is probably a bad idea even for something like this uh but your average the average day joes have already started that could get their boxes early have already started putting them on ebay and tg player well what happens when the drafters and your casuals, just the people that start buying the booster packs, start. Um, what inevitably happens at our stores, we have people start what we call fishing. So they'll want a particular card out of Ultimate Masters. So they'll buy a pack and not get it. I'm like, well, I don't want a creeping tar pit. So I'm going to sell it back to the store. How much will you give me store? And of course, I give them 50% value or something towards another pack. And then they fork out the more money. And, you know, they, they start fishing for the card they want and start uh, just flooding my singles market full of cards uh, that they don't want. But anyway, I uh, hope this hope this video was uh, interesting at least, or of help of what this this set is starting to do. I might sound a little glub here about, or, or what's the word I'm looking for? A little bit cocky. Of uh, This has actually happened faster than I, I thought it was going to be. But nonetheless, I did get a lot of hate for this, my opinion of, of where this was going to settle. It's nice to, uh, you know, have things... <laughs> fall your way, even though, you know, I didn't ask for this type of thing. It's just, just my analysis on what would happen. And we still have a lot to go. Anyway, this has been Kevin with the Rogue Market. Thanks for watching.